Okay, so I wanted to get started asking about um, the development of the documentary and what really interested you in making the film and just the process of getting the project together overall. The, are we talking about prof, for professional audience, for cinema, or cinephiles, or just for general audience? How are we talking? Um, pretty much like a general audience overall. Yeah. Mm. All right. So, you know, it's just like we have so many films, so many, so many films, so many type of type. We have like 50,000 films a year in the world. So, and uh, have to make the film that people will spot and have, have to make film which will be interesting for people. So it means you kind of, there are too few ways to do it. You can say something, uh, you can entertain or you can say something global and go to details or you can start with details. And like we have this two in cinema, we have this um, term, zoom in, zoom out. Do you know what it is? Zoom in, zoom out. So you can, for zoom in, it means you, you start wide and then you go in closer, 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 closer. Or you do opposite. You start with something and you do. do, 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 do. So, and filmmaker always decide how he does it, how he, how he goes. Or he, for example, um, for example, my last film I made this drop of water and I go to ocean and I go to, so, or it, you always decide and you always find something. You, I'm trying to find something which people don't understand. I mean, I, I don't want to make film what we can understand about, um, if we can understand it, I don't, I don't film it. If, we, if it's in, in the level of we, we can explain, I don't film it. I'd rather to film something we don't want to understand, or we decided not to think, or, or we don't know how to explain. For example, we don't, I, I guess we decided not to think about it, right? We decided not to, we decided not to notice those animals, right? We decided not to see them. We play with dogs, we are happy with our cats, we, uh, we, we like to see dolphins <laughs> <laughs> in the movies, right? We like to see Lassie or, chimpanzees and we go to zoo and da, da, da. but pigs come on no 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 they're not cute they're not no they are they are their personalities they are not food they are so that's yeah i don't know if i answer your your question mm -hmm. uh, yes you didn't yeah <laughs> And um, also I wanted to ask about just your general approach to directing this documentary and just that experience of really putting the film together as the director and just what that experience was like um, for this film and your, your approach to directing. Yeah, I, um, I'm a little bit, I always search from my, from my childhood always, all my films, I searched from my childhood and this one came from my childhood when I was a kid and I met, when I was four, I had a friend, it was a pivot and he was one month old. His name was Vasya and uh, it is my best memory of my childhood and, and of course he was eaten by relatives and which became big trauma for me. So in a way, it my, this film is my apology, in a way, to that Vasya, that, that, to that particular pig, and that I was not able to stop my relatives to kill him, and, and to all other animals who, mm, for billions, we are killing every year. And I, and I, I know I cannot do anything, I mean, I cannot, I cannot stay and stay, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> it will not work anyway, right? I, um, but I just wanted to show them 
that they're not something but someone, each of them. So, and uh, this was my kind of main purpose to to do in a way. I even wanted to call this film "Apology," my apology, because I know I I will not change this world, and people will continue eating them and killing them. But this is one point. Another point is. It's also connected to the art. Why why art exists, right? Why art exists? What what is the difference between art and not art? I mean, art probably exists because um, it finds a form which, like for example, poetry. Poets they use uh, what we know. They use what we already know. And we very and we use these words, but poets put them in the order, and suddenly become in different meaning. And it touch your heart, and you cry, right? If you if you separate these words, you know, oh, this I know this word, I know this word, but I never met them in such order before, right? Suddenly, so it make you feel something different than you felt, felt before. So in a way, it's similar with cinema. You kind of, you imagine what is peak and what is, there is nothing surprise here, right? But in a way, you didn't see it before, right? So you never saw it. I, I, I uh, yeah, just cinema is, not to tell a story, but to show you something you are not able to see yourself. Or oh, that's this is why cinema. Yeah. And also, I wanted to ask about the experience of actually shooting the film and working as one of the cinematographers and what that experience was like of figuring out how you wanted to visually shoot the film and showcase the story on screen as well. Uh, you know, I was lucky in my life. I, my first film, when I was a young filmmaker, I made my first film with uh, Georgi Rehrberg, cinematographer, who was cinematographer for film of Andrei Tarkovsky Miro. So imagine I was student and I, I was privileged to work with such a great cinematographer. So then all entire life for me was difficult to, to find cinematographer. So, and uh, I was trying with many, but it was difficult to find someone equal to, to the first experience with working with Redbeck. So, and unfortunately I started to film myself. Most of my films I made myself as cinematographer. But for this particular film, I found a great guy in in Norway, Egil uh, Larsen, who who has this unique ability to find right distance between camera and character. So you have to be very delicate. It's the same as it's the same as talking to people. Or if you never met them before, you have to be very delicate. You have to have to be very smooth and careful with every step you do, right? And very every word you do. So cinematography in a way, documentary is, is uh, it's kind of dance, I would say. It's kind of, you imagine, in a way it's kind of combination between jazz and dance. So the melody, you imagine you met someone on a dance floor and it's playing jazz music and you don't know melody you don't you 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 don't know what where it goes and you just listen right and and you don't know the person in front of you and you need to find this harmony with this person and with music itself same with cinematography with cinema when you film documentary you film someone real like in this case, Gunda or chicken or cow, you don't know how she will behave next second. 
you don't know, uh, but you have to be very careful. You have to feel atmosphere. You have to feel your mood, uh, the mood of your character. You have to feel everything around. You have to understand what you can do, what you can't do in order to you start to communicate together. You start to move together as one camera and character. So for example, if you, if you make wrong step, chicken will just run away from you, from you, right? Or a or, or bull will just put you on, on, his, <laughs> on his horn, right? Or Gunda, by the way, Gunda is very powerful. So if you, if you, if you do something wrong, she can easily <laughs> move you away. So this is why important is such kind of filmmaking is respect. The same as if you film human, and you sp first you need to do is you need to understand that you will re spend. You cannot come to film someone and just give take interview. You need to know you will dedicate your your time to this person, few months of your time. And then you come to this person and first you need to understand this person. You need to understand and then you smoothly find your position, try to be closer and closer and closer. The same that we did with Gunda, smoothly. And also I wanted to ask about editing the film as well and what that experience was like of really putting the final version of the film together as well. It was very easy because we didn't film much. You only filmed six hours. Actually, I wanted to make six hours long film, but I know because for me, everything was beautiful. For me, everything was wow, 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 wow. I, yeah. But I know people are not ready to see such long films. And let's say in order to make it a tiny bit easier for him, for, for normal audience, I made it 90 minutes just because people used to watch 90 minutes films. But in a way, for me, it would be grateful. Uh, for me, original film, six, six hours, what I film would be better. But I know form is important and I know frame is important and time frame is important as well. So if you, uh, you know, as Dostoevsky said, if I write Raskolnikov in, in Crime and Punishment, 500 pages, I need to know 5,000 pages. I don't need to write them. I need to know 10 times more about Raskolnikov in order you will read 500 pages with interest. So same with me, I know so much about Gunda and about animals. I read a lot before and study and talk to scientists and uh, people who study them, dedicate life to understand them as scientists and um, so on. And also, I wanted to ask about um, doing re any kind of research for the film and what that experience was like of doing that preparation um, as you began filming as well. Over. Yeah, that's what I just said that we I spoke with most important scientists of the in the planet uh, who 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 really studied them for for few decades and like twenty years and thirty years and. Unfortunately, most of studies, people, people study such animals mostly for increasing production, for, to make more meat, to make more meat. So how we can make more meat? And there are only few scientists that study them as, as animals just to, to understand them as they are. So, but still, my 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 goal was to to make it in a way that people can watch it not only today, but in a way that people can watch it in ten years' time or in twenty years' time, not just first weekend, right? I I just I I just wanted always 
because I was always thinking, have to make it, have not to make it actual, have not to make it just film for today, as a, but have not, have to make it in a way that it will not die. This film that you can. So this was was main uh, preparation. That just that's why I study a lot. I was watching a lot of scientific scientist footage um, to understand behavior of any, of them daily behavior in order to choose which moments are very visually attractive and same time meaningful meaningful and we created we created kind of we created a house similar to what she has originally but with possibilities that lens only lens not camel not team only lens is inside and can move 360 degrees there inside her body but camera and, and people were outside in order not to disturb her we, we kind of made it similar to her house but this um, possibility of using special equipment film equipment and then um, my last question that I wanted to ask is about the film's upcoming release and what that experience was like of securing the distribution and having the digital release overall as well. Yeah, this is actually, I would say, I feel now, so I don't even believe it's happening. I don't, I, I actually don't believe it, it's happening because, you know, you making film and suddenly people want to see it and everywhere want to see it and in this country call me from this country call me from this country mm -hmm. and people cry and people say oh i cannot imagine eating meat anymore why i didn't think about it especially if you have kids reacting i like if i go to physical screens people chick children coming to me saying i oh, why no one told us before why why never thought before and i said Oh, talk to your mom, talk to your friends, talk to your father. Why is it, why is it not told you? So, and I'm so happy Neon is doing it for me now. Neon and Cinefil and Neon is doing things I never imagined. I mean, Neon making it so, bringing it everywhere. So I'm really, really grateful for, I just, I cannot stop thank them because, uh, I know how to make movies, but I never had experience to show my movies. And uh, I never was lucky enough with distribution. And, and finally I found partners who really wants to show my film to the audience. And this is a big deal. It's, uh, f filmmaking is uh, actually, good question. People always ask me like, like students, what is filmmaker? And I said, don't make mistake. Filmmaker is not the person who, who knows how to make movie. It's not. Filmmaker is the person who saw movie in the cinema, who gets this something like catch in his in his heart, and he said, "I want to be filmmaker." And then he made movie. Then he listen what people say and make another movie. And then someone else watch your movie in cinema and say, ah, oh, I want to be a filmmaker. And then you become a filmmaker in this moment, not before. When it's, when it become a circle, not to make movies, not enough enough when you show film and you listen what people feel comes the react and you then you're able to do another one until someone young watch your movie and say oh, i want to make movie myself that's it for me okay great thank you very much again for taking the time and i appreciate it very much. Thank you, Karen. Have a nice Thank day. Thank you, Karen. You too.